All right, y'all. So today I wanted to talk about how to factor. This is part one discussing why factor. Why do we factor? Um, to start off, I want to talk about what are factors. Okay. So um, factors of a term or expression. So numbers like four, five, and x squared, these are all terms. Uh, the factors of a term or expression are the multiplicative pieces which make up that term or expression. All right. So for example, if my term is four, I could break that up into its factors of two and two. That would be because uh, two times two, two times two is equal to four. So because these two, these two factors multiply to make up the whole, they are the factors of four. Okay. Um, what about five? The factors of five would be five and one. And that's because uh, five times one, right? is equal to five. What about x squared? The factors x squared could be x and x, and that'd be because x times x is equal to x squared. So this is just a quick little recap to us about what are factors. Now, while we're talking about uh, why do we factor, it's gonna be really important for us to think a little bit more about solving equations because really solving equations and uh, our endeavors to solve equations in algebra causes a lot of our incentive to factor. It makes us want to factor in certain cases. Uh, so in algebra, we began exploring concepts of variables through functions and equations like these ones, uh, which involve those variables. So for example, uh, x plus five equals seven, three x squared equals 12, x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0. These were all equations you might have seen in your Algebra 1, Algebra 2 classes. Now, some of these equations are easy enough to solve using just some basic algebra, balancing of equations, inverse operations. So let, let's go ahead and do that right now. So for example, uh, we have x plus 5 equals 7. So I would subtract 5 from both sides. And that should give me x equals 7 minus 5 is 2. Cool, good enough. Uh, 3x squared equals 12. This one's a little bit harder, but not too much harder, right? So we're going to divide both sides by 3 to get rid of that 3 there. And so we'd be left with x squared equals 12 divided 3 is 4. Now, how do I get rid of the square here? Um, the inverse operation of a square is a square root. So I will square root both sides. Uh, that will remove that, and I will be left with x equals the square root of four is two plus or minus. Now, um, that's gonna be really important for people to just remember in the future. Remember guys, when you square root while solving equations, specifically while solving for a variable in an equation, you gotta put the plus or minus because if you think about it, uh, X could be two because two squared is four but X could also be negative two because negative two squared is still positive four. All right. So those ones were not too crazy, not too hard. There's other equations though, which are not so much as simple like this one, this one right here, X squared plus three X plus two equals zero. Um, the problem with this equation lies in there being multiple X terms. See right there, X squared and three X. Those are both X terms, right? In the other two equations, there was only a single X term, right? If you look at this one here, we've got three X squared. That's one X term. Here we have X, one X term. But in this equation, we got two of them. So that is our problem, right? Our problem is that there are multiple X terms. Now, what is the solution? The solution to having a equation with multiple x terms is to turn it into an equation with only one x term. Now I can't just do that magically by adding these guys, right? Because one's x squared, the other one's just x. So instead, what we're going to do is we are going to turn this single equation into multiple equations with one x term through factoring, right? Now, if you guys remember from algebra, what's going to end up happening is x squared plus 3x plus 2 is going to factor into x plus 2 times x plus 1. How did I factor that? That is a story for the next video, which will be posted right after this one. But so if 
x squared plus 3x plus 2 can be factored to x plus 2 times x plus 1 equals 0. Then I can claim that x plus 2 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. Now, you may be saying, Mr. Hoa, why am I able to claim this? Why is that true? Well, let's go check it out. The trick of it is actually quite clever because it's, it's both simple yet not really something that I, I think most people would have thought of uh, without maybe a little bit of guidance on their own. Um, in math, if two numbers, let's say A and B, multiply to equal zero, then it must be true that one of them is equal to zero. So what I'm saying is that if A times B, A and B being variables so they can represent anything, if A times B equals zero, it must be true that A equals zero or that B equals zero. Now I want you to take a moment, maybe pause the video if you need to, to convince yourself that this is true and why. Now, there's some formal proofs I could do to actually mathematically prove that this is true, but maybe I'll make a side video for that. In, in the meantime, let's just, we, we, I, I think it's quite clear that we could claim that if neither A or B equaled zero, there's no way they can multiply to zero, no matter their values, no matter how big or how small they are. Two small numbers multiplying together will still make a number that is not zero, okay? Now this is significant to us only because as variables, A and B can represent anything including expressions, such as A could be equivalent to x plus 2. B could be equivalent to x plus 1. Do you see where we're going? Before, I claimed that the quadratic x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0 could be factored to create the equation x plus 2 times x plus 1 equals 0. Now just a second ago, I, I was talking about how maybe a could equal x plus 2, so we'll write that down below. a is x plus 2, b was x plus 1, so a times b equals 0. These are equivalent expressions right now, correct? Because a is representative of x plus 2, b is representative of x plus 1. Earlier, we just showed that a times b equaling 0 implies that a equals 0 and or b equals 0, right? So by the same exact logic, I should be able to claim that if I have x plus 2 times x plus 1 equals 0, it is true that x plus 2 equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0. By solving these single x term expressions, I can get, therefore, that x equals negative 2 or x equals negative 1. So what's happened here is that by factoring in this equation, I was able to turn a equation which had two x terms into two equations, right? Two of them, which had single x terms. Therefore, it was solvable and I was able to get my solution. This is why we factor. Uh, factoring is a super important skill in algebra and beyond because it allows us to solve equations which simple algebra like just doing inverses and balancing equations does not allow us to solve.